Set in San Antonio for gas prices. The price per gallon now up another 12 cents and communities all across the country are feeling the pain at the pump. We've got a closer look this noon. And a robbery investigation underway after police say a crook hit up a downtown convenience store. How officers say he confronted a worker still ahead. Live from KSAT 12. The news at noon starts right now. We start with the gas prices skyrocketing all across the country and here in San Antonio. Gas reaching an all time high today, jumping nearly 12 cents in one day. It's now at $3.96 a gallon for regular unleaded. However, San Antonio drivers are still paying less than folks in other states. The national average now at $4.33 a gallon. And it's not the only necessity that's rising in price. ABC's Rena Roy has more. Long lines of drivers in California waiting to save a few cents on gas. It's the most expensive state to fill up your tank right now. The average price per gallon, $5.67. The average cost nationwide, four thirty three, dollars up 63 cents in a week. I remember 1959, 58, that there were 25 cents. Prices were already going up, now even more so with all Russian oil imports banned. A barrel of oil reaching $130. $30 earlier this week. The cost of diesel also on the rise, affecting truck drivers and farmers. We were probably spending uh, $3,500 a month on fuel um, before the prices have started going crazy. And uh, now we're looking at, you know, getting getting over uh, $5,000 a month in fuel. Prices from food to rents already up more than 7.9% over the last year. I'm trying to find where to cut back, but Groceries are high, gas is high, and there's nowhere, there's nowhere, to, there's nowhere to run. Tamika Calhoun of Jackson, Mississippi is struggling to make ends meet for her five children. I have missed meals so that the kids could eat. I wouldn't tell them, of course, because they'll try to, you know, share their food with me. We have a big family and the price of meat has gone up so much. It's about $100 each time I go to the grocery store. A growing number of lawmakers, including several governors, are asking the government to suspend the federal gas tax, which is just over 18 percent. Some states like Michigan and Pennsylvania are also looking to suspend or reduce their own gas taxes. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And right now on KSAT.com, a look at gas prices in San Antonio over the past year, plus how prices look across our state. You can find that story on our homepage. To the war in Ukraine now today, there were more folks pushing for peace. However, efforts to reach a broad ceasefire have failed. This comes as a Russian airstrike on a Maripol maternity hospital that killed three people drew outrage. Ukrainian and Western officials branding it a war crime. Ukrainian authorities said a child was among the dead in Wednesday's attack. Thousands of soldiers and civilians have died so far, and the war has driven more than two million people from Ukraine. Many fled to Poland, and that's where Vice President Kamala Harris was this morning. Part of the reason for the trip, smoothing things over after the U.S. rejected Poland's offer to supply jets to Ukraine. However, Vice President Harris did talk about the next steps in Eastern Europe's handling of the ongoing conflict. We are pleased to have announced this week that we have directed two Patriot missile defense systems to Poland. And today I can announce that we have delivered those Patriot systems to Poland. The U.S. has committed to providing Ukraine with nearly $53 million in new humanitarian aid. Look at outside with live cam. Enjoy it while you got it. Sun's out, no clouds, 63 degrees. It Just feels great outside. Doesn't get better than this. It really doesn't, Ursula. And as you just mentioned, soak it up while you can because tomorrow wind chills are going to be in the 20s and 30s. Yes, you heard that right. Take a look out with those temperatures right now. Absolutely gorgeous outside. It's 61 in Bulverde, 61 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 68 down at Simpson, 68 in Pleasanton. It's 64 in Gonzales and 63 in Uvalde. Nothing but sunshine out there right now and into the afternoon. We're going to be really pleasant looking at a high temperature right around 74 this afternoon. Southeast winds for the remainder of the day at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Okay, 
Okay, what's up with the weather? What are we going to talk about in the forecast? First of all, that strong cold front arrives tomorrow. Not only is it going to drop those temperatures from the 70s today into the 40s and 30s tomorrow, but it's also going to produce winds gusting up to 40 to 45 miles per hour. That's going to give us a wind chill in the 20s and 30s. And then finally, as those winds calm by Saturday morning, we'll be dealing with a freeze around San Antonio, a late season freeze. I'll show you how low those temperatures will go and some advice for those of you who have decided to plant some gardening uh, gardens already. So that and more coming up in the forecast in a few minutes. Thank you, Sarah. A man shot and killed outside a northwest side apartment complex and the person responsible now on the run. According to San Antonio police, the shooting happened outside the Eckert Heights apartment complex off of Gus Eckert and Fredericksburg early this morning. As Stephen Cavazos explains, the search for that killer continues. Well, there is little to go on as investigators continue their search for the person they say pulled the trigger. According to Chief Willie McManus, this all happened just before 8 this morning. We're told a man believed to be in his mid-20s was shot in the parking lot while trying to get into his vehicle. Witnesses tell police they saw a man in a dark hoodie running from the scene, but McManus says they do not have a full description of the shooting suspect. Witnesses we talked to off camera tell us the man who was shot lived here and they believed he was heading to work. At this time, a motive has not been released. The investigation is still in the early stages. Reporting Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. The name of the man who was killed has not been released as of yet. New at noon, a suspect still free after a store worker was held up at knife point inside a downtown store. This is the person that police want to find. According to officers, he arrived at a convenience store in the 100 block of Jefferson. That's near Travis Park. It happened last month. Police tell us he pulled out a knife and confronted a worker demanding money, then grabbed the cash and got away. If you can help officers with this investigation, you could call Crime Stoppers. The number to call 210-224-STOP. A west side neighborhood is filled with heartache this noon after a deadly fire overnight. San Antonio firefighters say a 68 year old man died after his home went up in flames. It happened on a street called Grove Hill, not far from Calabra Road and Benris Boulevard. Katrina Weber spoke with one of several people who tried in vain to rescue that man. Firefighters exit this home in the 5100 block of Grove Hill Street, loaded down with gear, but with even heavier hearts. They were not able to save it or a man trapped inside when it went up in flames shortly before midnight. Before they arrived, neighbors also had tried. We heard him um, asking for help. We heard him twice. We just, we tried to get in, we tried. Jenna Garza says she first had noticed heavy smoke across the street and called 911. Then with her husband and others, she went into rescue mode, running to help two women struggling to get out through the garage and trying to reach the trapped man. We couldn't get back in to get him and um, the fire, the smoke was too much for me and my neighbor. Once fire crews put out the flames, they found the 68 year old dead in a front room. His neighbors regret that they weren't able to do more. Garza says the heavy smoke was only part of the challenge. She says what really slowed down this rescue were those burglar bars. They made it impossible for them to get inside. I don't feel bad. I just wish that there were a couple more minutes or a couple more seconds. I feel like that would have made the the utmost difference. It seems their efforts, though, did save two other lives. The women who they helped, the man's 94 year old mother and 76 year old sister, were checked out at a hospital and released. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Still come this half hour, Spurs head coach Greg Popovich still a win away from the all time wins record in the NBA. Stage one water restrictions go into effect today for SAWS customers. So if you plan on using your irrigation system, your sprinklers or a solar hose, you need to keep this in mind. You can only water on your watering day before 11 a.m. or after 7 p.m. If your address ends in a six or seven, today is your watering day. Those of you who are planning to use a handheld hose, you can water anytime on any day. We've got all this information for you posted on our website, just go over to kset.com. Yeah, absolutely. We could use a little rain and you know, 
We have a chance for some rain tomorrow and overnight. It's just going to be that light rain that may amount to a tenth of an inch or two tenths of an inch or so. Probably not going to help out that aquifer too much. All right, let's take a look at the pollen count because I do want to mention that there are four aller five allergens out there today. Molds, elm, juniper, ash and oak. Thankfully, all of them are low and the aquifer is actually up three tenths of a foot. We'll talk about those rain chances and how much temperatures will drop coming up in just a bit. There's that pollen count for you and there's the aquifer up three tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours. So yeah, temperatures are gonna be falling here very quickly. I'll give you that update in just a bit. As I say in the business, that's a laundry list of all those allergens that are in the air. That's a, that's a good list. So is it, I think it's a cumulative thing. Like even though they're all low, there's so many. That could be it. But something mm -hmm. else so that, that I want to talk about is with winds tomorrow, Ursula and David, those trees are going to get shaken up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder if we're going to be seeing some of that tree pollen go up in the coming days. Hey, it was cold this morning. We got down to freezing at Bernie Stage Airfield, even to JBSA Randolph and up toward Kerrville. But although we started off in the 30s, look at where things are now. With plenty of sunshine, we're already in the 60s. A 30 degree jump here from complete sunshine, dry atmosphere, winds from the southeast at about 10 miles per hour. It feels amazing outside and through the remainder of the afternoon, it's going to feel great too. It's 61 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 64 in Hondo, 63 in Kerrville, uh, 68 at Stenson, barely a cloud in the sky out there, blue skies, uh, 64 in Del Rio, already 70 in Laredo. So looking at high temperatures today, it's going to be close to 80 degrees out west toward Del Rio, 78, 79 in Laredo and 79 in Catula. Around San Antonio, though, we are going to be looking at a high temperature in the low to mid 70s. So a gorgeous afternoon for us. But things change. Things change tomorrow morning. You can see that across the central plains, there's plenty of snowfall. There's our cold front right now working its way through North Texas. And temperatures behind this front are very cold. This is a dense cold air mass that just spills across the United States. And it's going to be moving through San Antonio early tomorrow morning. Temperatures behind this front are well below freezing and will be below freezing by Saturday morning. So let me walk you through the future cast. First thing to know, Overnight tonight, we're going to start to see some mist, some drizzle, some light rain showers moving on in ahead of that front. So you might end up hearing a little bit of rain tonight as you're trying to sleep outside and temperatures will be uh, fairly mild in the morning in the upper 50s near 60 degrees to start the day for the morning commute. But we will have some dampness out there as well, but that front will be to our north working its way through the hill country. Then by the middle of the morning, that front is going to move through and temperatures will fall from near 60 degrees into the 40s by lunch tomorrow. So you may not need the jacket in the morning, but you'll definitely want to leave the house with it because by lunch things are going to be very chilly. Any light rain will come to an end after lunch and what we'll be left with is just a cold and blustery afternoon. Temperatures by the evening hours are going to fall into the 30s in San Antonio, close to freezing up in the hill country, and the winds are going to be howling from the north, gusting up to about 40 to 45 miles per hour. Something to note with those wind gusts of 40, 45 miles per hour, that may cause some very localized temporary power outages as those tree branches interact with the power lines. But we do not expect widespread problems from that. Just something to keep in mind. The biggest thing to keep in mind with the wind gusts is that it's going to make it feel a lot colder than it is outside tomorrow. Wind chills will be in the 20s and 30s around San Antonio. And even by the evening hours, it'll feel like it's in the teens in the hill country. So a very cold day, quick shift from spring to winter through tomorrow. And then by Saturday morning, winds are actually going to calm overnight Friday 
Friday into Saturday morning, skies will be clear and that is the perfect recipe to see a freeze, a late season freeze. Around San Antonio, temperatures will be from about 30 to 32 degrees, but up in the hill country, it will be well into the 20s. Now we're not concerned about pipes bursting or anything like that, but something to keep in mind is that if you've done any springtime gardening, that will pose a risk for temperature sensitive plants. So plan ahead Friday night, tomorrow night, bring in those plants, cover them up. And also on Sunday morning too, we're going to have a light freeze. But here's the kicker. Even though Saturday and Sunday will start off cold, plenty of sunshine will allow us to have an enjoyable weekend, especially in the afternoons. On Saturday, our high temperature will be near 60 degrees. And after that morning freeze on Sunday, our high temperatures will be near 70 degrees. So a big change in the forecast over the next 24 hours, but then we change right back to comfortable weather. And by Monday, we'll be at 80, 70s and 80s mm. next week. Half of San Antonio enjoying spring break this week. Feel kind of bad because they've got some colder weather, but the rest of uh, the spring breakers next week are going to enjoy some comfortable weather. Okay, I have one more sweater to wear this winter. Here you go, tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. The Spurs need a win for Pop and for their playoff hopes. We've got highlights from what happened last night coming up and a big weekend for high school boys basketball playoffs. Head coach Greg Povich still needs one more win to get the all-time record for wins in the NBA because his team could not get past Toronto Raptors last night. He's still tied with his friend Don Nelson, who was watching at his home in Hawaii. Spurs fell behind early, killed Johnson, do what he could to keep him close with the three from the wing. Then DeJounte Murray comes up with a turnover, and that's going to start the break. Dishing over to Lonnie Walker, who's going to finish that break. A little left-handed layup for you. From the outside this time, Walker's going to nail the three. Spurs are down five after one. Spurs get into under control in the second. Keldon attacks the hoop. Spurs up three. Final seconds before the half. DeJounte drops it off to Keldon. The bucket, he had 15 in the first half. Spurs lead by three. We go to defense that creates offense. Dr. Pirtle with the block. Murray running the other way. And finishes at the rim. Spurs up seven, but the Raptors go on a 20-6 run. Precious Achoa knocks the three down, and the Raptors lead by six. Spurs keep the fight going, though. Josh Richardson comes up with the big block down low. Spurs pushing it, walking to Kelton for the baseline slam. Spurs down seven, going to the fourth, but the Spurs fall apart in the fourth. Former Spurs, Thaddeus Young, drills the three from the corner. Toronto up 15. Kelton led everyone with 27, but the Raptors sweep the season series. The Spurs fall to the Raptors 119-104. I thought we played them well until we got that one stretch where uh, in the third quarter they scored nine in a row, and that really changed the game. Uh, you know, having DeJounte out for that period right after that didn't help, but uh, they did a great job on the board. Uh, we turned it over too much, 22 points off turnovers, uh, and, you know, they were tough to stop. All right, so the Spurs need a win, not just for Pop to get that record, but they also need a win to – Try to get into that playoff spot, the 10th spot in the West. They're two games behind. They play the Jazz on Friday, tomorrow night. Tip off 730, AT&T Center. There are three San Antonio area teams that are headed to the Boys State High School Basketball Tournament in the Alamo Dome this weekend, and one of them is defending state champion, the Cole Cougars. That's after they won their first state title last year since 1989 when Shaq led the Cougars to the championship that season with an undefeated record. Now, after beating Marion 71-37 to win their fourth straight regional title, the Cole Cougars will be looking to win back-to-back -back state titles, but first... They're going to face Hitchcock in the 3A semifinals on Thursday in the Dome. They're pretty good, but it's, going to be a, it's definitely going to be a tough one as all teams in the state tournament is really good. And this last few games of the season, we just got to work hard and play as hard as we can. Playing in the Dome, you know, depth perception, you know, the big stage, all the people, you know, it's different from uh, regular games, district games. So, I mean, definitely having that experience in the Dome is uh, huge. All right, so all the action gets started on Thursday at 3 o'clock. It's Cole and Hitchcock. Then at 8.30, it's Bernie Champion and Mansfield Timberview. And then on Friday, it's Bernie and Wichita Falls. Is it Hirchi? I don't know. I'm not from Wichita Falls. I wouldn't know. But anyway, they're playing at 3. All right. So if Bernie wins, we don't have to worry about we'll pronouncing it. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Seeing San Antonio at its highest gas price 
ever. Will the problem get worse before it gets better? Coming up today at 5, 1200 Slides Marilyn Ward speaks with a local catering company about how the price of the pump is affecting their business. It's today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. Ukraine's foreign minister says talks between the top diplomats in Moscow and Kyiv have produced no breakthrough in ending the war in Ukraine following that invasion by Russia. ABC's Ian Panel is in Kyiv with the latest. The mayor of Kyiv now saying that as many as half of this city's residents may have fled this war in just over two weeks. But of course, as many people head to the West, to Poland and other European countries and to safety, there are still thousands more coming into the city who are fleeing those outlying villages and towns around the capital. As you can see, this used to be a kindergarten in a time of peace. Three weeks ago, the sound of children were in these rooms, but today it's now a shelter for the elderly who've had to flee some of the front lines. Meanwhile, no obvious sign of a breakthrough in these talks that took place on the sideline of this conference in Turkey today between the Ukrainian and Russian foreign ministers. The Ukrainian foreign minister Kuleba saying this morning that Russia is still insisting that the Ukrainian surrender, which of course is something the Ukrainian president and others have made clear they're not prepared to do. There was some discussion about humanitarian corridors, but again we're seeing these announced almost daily now, these temporary ceasefires, and they're very imperfect at best. The situation in a lot of cities around the country is dire, in particular in Mariupol on the Black Sea coast, which has been under siege, uh, without water, without power, bodies lying in the street for days now. And again, another attempt to try and evacuate residents from that city today seems to have failed with reports of more heavy Russian bombardments. And of course, that's where the maternity and children's hospital was struck overnight. The scenes of devastation are appalling. It's being condemned by many people as a war crime by Russia. But there's no sign that Russia is going to relent. Ian Panel, ABC News in Kyiv, Ukraine. The House of Representatives passed a $13.6 billion emergency aid bill for Ukraine last night. The money for Ukraine is set aside for defense, economic assistance and humanitarian aid. There's also $4 billion to help refugees as well as provisions to enforce sanctions against Russia. In addition to demonstrating support for Ukraine, the House passed a stopgap bill to extend government funding through Tuesday. Now the legislation will move to the U.S. Senate where the race continues to meet the Friday midnight deadline to keep the government running. Russian propaganda continuing to justify the war in Ukraine by pushing misinformation. As CNN's Kitty, Katie Puglais explains, even those debunked stories are gaining traction on social media all around the world. The foreboding music, biohazard warnings. This Russian state media footage from 2015 claims to show America running facilities in Ukraine and Georgia that caused deadly outbreaks of disease and killed local livestock. This story is false, but that has not stopped it continuing to circulate, evolving from biological hazards to biological weapons and becoming a key part of Russia's disinformation campaign justifying the invasion of Ukraine. The claims were debunked several years ago when, in 2020, the United States issued a statement to, quote, set the record straight, explaining the facilities are in fact for vaccine development and to report outbreaks caused by dangerous pathogens before they pose security or stability threats. But this week, the story was back. We are confirming the facts that were unveiled during the special military operation in Ukraine that indicate an emergency cleanup of military biological programs by the Kyiv regime. They were carried out by Kyiv and financed by the United States of America. Multiple times the Russian foreign ministry has resurfaced the debunked story. On Tuesday, it was mentioned by a Russian ally. It is reported that those biolabs store a large number of dangerous viruses. During Russia's military operation, it was found that the U.S. is using those facilities to conduct biological militarization activities. So alongside these official statements, it's being repeatedly shared across social media, from Facebook to Twitter to Telegram. And CNN's been tracking its spread. And you can see here it's being posted in Canada, Australia, Germany. And this tweet, as one example, you can see it's being retweeted over 500 times already. 
The theory has now attracted the attention of figures and platforms with significant followings in the United States. Go into Ukraine and take out the biolabs. Such as the conspiracy theorist Stu Peters and has been featured on the far-right platform Infowars. U.S. bioweapons labs in Ukraine. And so Russia's false narrative on American biolabs in Ukraine continues to spread. Katie Poglase, CNN, London. The U.S. has a record number of jobs opening in January. There were 11.3 million open jobs. However, there aren't enough workers. That's the latest from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. It says 4.3 million people quit at the start of the year, looking for better pay as gas and grocery prices rose. Look at outside with live cam. It's a pretty day. Get your exercise outside today. Tomorrow, you might be in some rain. Yeah, I was even thinking, I was chatting with David earlier. I was like, oh, maybe, you know, because I'm off tomorrow. I was like, maybe I'll go for a walk or something. No, the weather's going to be bad tomorrow. We cannot do that. We're going to be having windy wind gusts of up to 40 to 45 miles per hour. And... We're going to be seeing wind chills in the 20s and 30s. What a difference, though. Today outside, it's going to be great. This is this afternoon's high temperatures uh, forecast to be in the low to mid 70s around San Antonio, even the upper 70s out uh, toward Del Rio and Eagle Pass, as well as Laredo. But this will be the picture tomorrow. Tomorrow, temperatures will be falling throughout the day in the 40s, and wind chills will be in the 30s and 20s. So yes, if you can get outside today, go for it. Enjoy that sunshine. Tomorrow things are going to flip for us Do a 180. In addition to the cold weather, we're also going to be seeing some dampness, especially in the morning from some light rain. We've got a lot to cover in the forecast. Those details for you in just a few minutes. David and Ursula. Thank you so much. The father and son convicted of murdering Ahmad Arbery want their convictions thrown out. Lawyers for Gregory and Travis McMichael filed their acquittals on their federal hate crimes convictions this week. The McDaniels claim that prosecutors did not provide sufficient evidence for all three counts. They are a federal hate crime charge, attempted kidnapping and firearms charges. Before the hate crimes trial, the McMichaels and William Bryan were found guilty of fatally shooting Arbery in February of 2020. A sentencing date on the hate crime convictions has not yet been set, but the McMichaels are already serving life in prison sentences for the murder. Michigan statewide investigation into allegations of widespread abuse tied to the Boy Scouts of America will lead to criminal charges. Last year, the state attorney general's office created a hotline for victims to call with information about abuse tied to the Boy Scouts. They now believe there could be thousands of victims in the state. At a news conference, the attorney general announced the first charges from the investigation. Mark Chapman, a former scoutmaster, is facing 10 counts of second degree criminal sexual conduct. Chapman is currently in jail in New York on a separate sex abuse charge. Michigan authorities say more suspects will likely be charged. The lives of Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz front and center in a new documentary, how the director made sure that the pair could tell their story in their own words. Your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. The U.S. is falling short of its vaccine donation goal to ship 1.2 billion vaccine doses to other countries in need by the end of 2022. So far, the U.S. has shipped 474 million vaccine doses, but is averaging about 60 million per month. Three million doses per month would be needed to deliver to hit that goal of 1.2 billion, according to a new report. BMW is recalling more than 917,000 vehicles over the risk of engine fires. It covers many 3 Series, 5 Series, 1 Series X5, X3, and Z4 vehicles in model years 2006 through 2013. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration saying an electrical short can cause the engine to overheat and create a fire. And Congress is moving to tighten restrictions on flavored vaping products that are popular with teens. New legislation with bipartisan support would give oversight to the FDA. A federal ban was put in place in 2020 to stop the sale of the favored vapes, but e-cig makers have skirted the rules by by making their own synthetic nicotine. 
And that's your Cheddar News and Tech Update. I'm Ariel Hickson, live from the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Mortgage rates are on the rise just ahead of the busy spring real estate market season. The mortgage company Freddie Mac reports the 30-year fixed rate averaged 3.85% this week. That's up from 3.76% last week. Analysts say the war in Ukraine is causing percentages to climb because of market instability and the threat of supply shortages. Also a major factor, fears of rising inflation. Today, the government reported the consumer price index stood at 7.9% for the 12 months ending in February, a level not seen since 1982. The mask mandate for travelers in the United States could be sticking around a little bit longer. The requirement currently set to expire on March 18th, but federal officials are now saying that they will likely be an announcement about extending it for 30 more days. The mandate is one of the last remaining broad requirements for Americans to wear masks in public places. It applies to all mass transportation, including planes, trains, buses, and hubs like airports. The new COVID-19 test to treat program rollout is underway in the U.S. It means that if you test positive for COVID-19, you can get free antiviral medication to help treat it. CNN's Mandy Gaither has more on how the program works and where you can get that free medicine. Two COVID-19 antiviral pills are already available for free in the U.S., but getting them quickly can be challenging. These treatments work to prevent the worst outcomes of COVID-19. The new test to treat program aims to help that by allowing people to go to one place to be tested for COVID-19 and if positive, be given free antiviral pills on the spot. Hundreds of one-stop sites will open across the country this month, located at local pharmacy clinics, community health centers, long-term care facilities, and veterans health centers. Certain pharmacies across the U.S., including CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart, have confirmed some of their locations are getting ready to take part in the program. Pfizer's antiviral pill is for people 12 and older. Merck's is for adults only. Anyone who tests positive in those age groups can be given the medications to take at home. The treatment works best when given within a few days of the start of symptoms. While the one-stop sites are ordering the COVID-19 antiviral medicines now, the orders have to be delivered before they can be prescribed. Patients are expected to be able to receive COVID-19 antivirals through this program later this week. To find a location taking part, there will be a test to treat website expected to launch in mid-March. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Looking outside with live cam. Man. It's just too pretty. Vitamin D today. Yes, all you want. Yeah, but tomorrow it's going to be hard to get there. It's, it's going to be cold tomorrow. All right. Hey, take a look at the allergens. A lot of pollen in the air today, but thankfully they're all low. But still, five allergens out there, elm, oak, juniper, and ash trees pollinating right now. I'm a little worried that with the windy conditions tomorrow, we're going to see those numbers go up. You can see wind gusts of up to 40, 45 miles per hour tomorrow. All right, in the aquifer, although the aquifer is up three tenths of a foot today, today is the first day that SAWS customers are under stage one water restrictions because that 10 day average that you see there has dropped below 660 feet. We do have a chance for rain on Friday, especially in the morning, but really we're only looking at light rain showers, so not amounting to too much. That rain, because of that strong front, I'll show you what that's gonna do to temperatures coming up. So don't think about tomorrow just yet. Just enjoy the beautiful day today. How about That's that? That's right. But get your coat and your sweater out. Yeah, you guys got any afternoon plans to spend some time outside at all? Today? <laughs> I probably should. Yeah, maybe just soak up a little bit of sun. I might just go for that walk you were talking about. Yeah, you should. Today. Today's going to be the day to do it. Tomorrow, <laughs> not so much. All right, let's take a look outside with temperatures. We're already at 72 at Pleasanton. It is 64 in Hondo, 63 here in San Antonio, but that temperature is going to go up here uh, throughout the remainder of the afternoon. 64 in Del Rio, 70 in Laredo. Beautiful sunny skies, and today we'll top off in the low 
low 70s around San Antonio just in the next couple of hours here. Winds for the remainder of the day going to be from the southeast at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Notice that tonight we really don't see temperatures falling off all that much this evening. We'll be near 60 degrees throughout the evening hours, but rain chances do go up after midnight, and that's because of the approach of a fairly strong cold front. On the satellite radar, you can see all the snowfall across parts of Illinois, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, and even out into the Rockies. This is behind that system that's bringing that front to San Antonio. Temperatures behind this front are very cold. Five in Casper, Wyoming, 21 in Nebraska, 26 in Wichita, even 37 degrees right now in Lubbock. We're about 30 degrees warmer in San Antonio, uh, and uh, temperatures are going to fall quickly tomorrow because of this dense cold air mass. You know, air is so that is so cold. It's pretty much like molasses. It just spills across uh, the country and it's fairly dense and causes quick temperature changes. And we're going to see that tomorrow in the form of this cold front. First, though, you'll notice those skies becoming cloudy after 10 o'clock this evening. And then throughout the morning tomorrow, we're going to have scattered light rain around the morning commute. It'll be near 60 degrees, so not necessarily cold yet early in the morning, but it will be damp in places and then that front is slated to arrive to San Antonio close to about nine o'clock in the morning. So you'll start off the day tomorrow. If you have a, a morning to start before nine o'clock in the morning, you'll start off fairly mild. But then with that front moving through, you'll need the jacket as early as about lunch because temperatures will be falling into the 40s with a stout wind. And even up in the hill country like Bernie Canyon Lake, New Braunfels, temperatures will be in the 30s by about lunch. And then throughout the afternoon, Afternoon, those temperatures will fall. We'll be close to 40 degrees around San Antonio, 50 degrees out west. They'll have a little bit of sun toward Del Rio, but still a cold day tomorrow. And with winds gusting, we're going to have a pretty uh, noticeable wind chill. So winds are going to gust tomorrow, especially during the second part of the day at about 40 to 45 miles per hour. That will knock over any kind of patio furniture that's really light and Keep in mind that if you do have tree branches near power lines, there could be some very localized, localized power outages. Not concerned about widespread power outages from this, but that's just something to keep in mind tomorrow when those winds are gusting up to about 40 to 45 miles per hour. The biggest thing, though, is that it's going to make it feel a lot colder outside uh, because of those winds. So temperatures throughout the day falling tomorrow will be in the 30s by the evening, and then those wind chills will be in the 20s and 30s. So heavy coat, heavy jacket, scarf, all of that tomorrow with those uh, wind chills in the 20s and 30s. Then winds are actually going to calm overnight Friday night into Saturday morning. And so by dawn on Saturday, we're going to have temperatures below freezing in San Antonio, anywhere from about 30 to 32 degrees around the metro area, but it will be a lot colder up in the hill country. We're talking morning lows in the low 20s in the hill country uh, on Saturday morning. So there is a risk for any plants that have been planted early this season. There's a risk for those uh, to get a little frost on them. So you may want to bring in those plants, uh, cover them up, and, and this would be the latest freeze we've had since 2006. So it is fairly late in the season for San Antonio, not necessarily for the hill country, but for San Antonio, this is fairly late in the season as our average last February for last freezes is, is in February. But the weekend's still going to be nice. In spite of the cold start, we're going to have plenty of sunshine over over the weekend and temperatures will respond nicely. We'll be looking at highs near 60 on Saturday and highs near 70 on Sunday as we lose that hour of sleep. So a pretty uh, up and down temperature forecast this week for spring breakers. But next week for those on spring break, it's going to be very nice highs in the 70s and 80s. Looks good after Friday. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you. The mother of my children, ladies and gentlemen, Lucille Ball. Archival audio recordings of Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz help tell the story in the documentary, Lucy and Desi. I was madly in love with Desi. I've never felt that way about anyone before. Director Amy Poehler says using the recordings was integral to the film. We really wanted their voices to be heard, literally, in the film. I really wanted Desi and Lucy to try to tell us as much as uh, they could. Not only because I think that 
I would love to hear what they say and don't say about the experiences in their lives, but also I think that their voices keep them alive. The recordings include I Love Lucy co-star Vivian Vance. I have approved of you since the day I set eyes on you. And you know, you were hired without my seeing you, remember? I know. I've often wondered, Miss Ball. <laughs> the film delves into the couple's origins, cultural impact, and even business ventures. The giant studio that they ran, how big it actually was, how many shows were on the air at one time. And then also just the small things, the way that, like, you know, Desi brought the conga line to the U.S. The dance that your aunts still do at your cousin's wedding is because of Desi. Even the way in which Desi and Lucy worked incredibly hard for a long time before America knew their names. The show was one of the most wonderful things happened in my life. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. That's a must-see right there. Yeah. Check that out. So do you need to get away for the weekend? SA Live has a list of places you can go, and it's not too far away. Plus, spring break activities, some yummy food. Ooh. Mike, show us what you got. Well, as always, we just have a bunch of stuff coming up on today's SA Live. It is round one of spring break with all the flavors of San Antonio. Naco 210, food truck gone restaurant, making chilaquiles, love those. And they're a little bit different from what you might be used to. Davila's Barbecue, can't go wrong there. They're going to show us what pink butcher paper can do to help you make the perfect brisket. Sounds like a great trick. The Broadway musical West Side Story is coming to San Antonio, but it has a twist. We give you a sneak peek at this immersive experience. You are not going to believe it. The dancers, a lot of them local, are wonderful. Hey, Man Overboard Brewery, hot new brewery in town. Jen's going to take us there. And SeaWorld San Antonio, you got to go out to SeaWorld on spring break. The owner gives us a sneak peek at a thrilling new ride out there. Energy X Fitness, fun spring break family workouts. Yep, everybody in the family gets to exercise together. And Texas Trippin'. Okay, how many times do you say, what should we do this weekend? Well, Jen has some great ideas for little mini trips that you can take in 2022. That whole lot more coming up on SA Live. Stick around. Spring this afternoon and winter tomorrow. That's what we get in the forecast over the next 48 hours with some scattered light rain in the morning hours, but that wind will make it feel like it's 20 to 30 degrees outside. Now temperatures on Saturday and Sunday morning are going to be near freezing and below freezing. So plan accordingly if you have any uh, freshly planted gardens out there. But at least after Sunday, things are going to be very nice for the extended period. We could use a little bit more rain, but hey, we'll take the nice weather, won't we? <laughs> we sure will. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate it. All right. Food, fun, and some great looking trips close by. Spring break. Here we come. All right, SA Live starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Spring break is nearly here, but don't feel like you need to go on a fancy trip or spend a lot of money. Plenty of adventure awaits even in your own backyard. Yes, author of the Mischief Maker series uh, and a book that makes us laugh every time. <laughs> every time we say it, Mom, I farted in church. Christy Cuthbert joins us. It sounds like there's lots of fun adventures in the Cuthbert house, right? There <laughs> is. There's lots of fun adventures. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for being here. All right, so a good day, of course, starts with breakfast, yes. and that's where the fun begins with that first meal. Yeah, make it, turn it into a game. You know my motto, turn it into a game. <laughs> so we're going to move over to here and we're going to have breakfast on a string today. Okay. We're going to compete. We're going to put our hands behind our backs oh. and attempt to eat breast breakfast and <laughs> see who can finish first. Okay. Right. And go. your boys have done this. Yes. How, oh, how, yeah. How did it go? It, it was a hit. We actually did hang a donut Ooh. at a Halloween party and it was <laughs> the favorite game we played. I got it. Mm -hmm. there go. And it'll keep them occupied mm -hmm. for a while, right? Mm -hmm. Spring break is all about <laughs> occupying them and getting little moments and of keep them out sanity. <laughs> yes, that's a bonus too. Fine, we'll have to try this. At all home. right. Yes, keep that's them busy. A great idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's, What's next? next? Okay, we're gonna make DIY geodes. So Texas, there's geodes everywhere. Anytime you go to caves, whatnot. These are made at home and they're beautiful. Um, my voice, any kids can do these. You're just gonna take an egg, like a natural egg. You can use an Easter egg. Natural eggs turn out better. You're gonna put a dab of school blue in it. Huh? Take a paintbrush, and smear it around in there. Nice little thin coat. And then you're gonna take what's called potassium aluminum sulfate powder. 
powder, alum powder. You can get it on Amazon. That was my next question. Yeah. Where, do you, where do you get that? I'm yes. sure you can find it locally sourced somewhere. <laughs> I could not so spell that. It's right. an Amazon one. Alum powder. Okay. Um, you sprinkle a little bit inside the egg, just kind of roll it around so it gets a nice coating on it, okay? okay. Then you're going to let that dry. Uh, put it to the side, let it dry. Then when you're ready to do your geode, you're going to take two cups of boiling water. You can literally take the mason jar, throw it in the microwave for five minutes until it's real, real hot. Then you're going to put whatever color you want on your geode. Natural is actually beautiful too. The clear crystals Ooh. turn out real pretty. Um, and then you're going to put three-fourths of a cup of the alum powder into your boiling hot water. The key is to get them to mix together really well. You don't want it to settle on the bottom or you're going to just get crystals on the bottom of your jar and not on your eggshell. So dump it all in there. Obviously, if it's boiling, we'd see a Ooh, nice like mix going on. Yeah. yeah. And then that's basically it. You're going to drop your eggshell in there, and you can wait overnight, or if you're doing it during the day, I'd say, yeah, about um, 8 to 10 hours, I'd leave it in there and come back and give it a check. Make sure it's fully down oh, in the yes. water yes. so it's coated with the solution. There we go. And then from that, yeah. we get these Voila. Like, they turn wow. out so gorgeous. Wow. They're so a little delicate when you're taking them out, so just be careful okay. with the crystals. And if you want to make them fancier, can add some gold paint around the edge. What That's a way beautiful. to kind of switch up Easter. Look yeah, at that. right. Ooh, I'm trying. That turned out so cool. <laughs> that one for sure. Now for the kiddos that love to play in the dirt, you have a fun one. Yeah. <laughs> dirt dessert. This yeah. Fit. My mom used to make this when I was a kid. It's so yummy and it's so fun. You basically get yourself a cute little plant potter and uh, you fill it with layers of chocolate pudding and crushed Oreos. The key with the Oreos, just take the cream out so you don't get that in the mixture and it looks like real powdery dirt. Right. Um, and then you throw in some gummy worms for the gross out factor and the delicious tasty <laughs> factor rolled into one and it's it's something they can do themselves um, it doesn't break the bank it's cute and kind of springy and these are really inexpensive too yeah yeah <laughs> you can find you can yeah. find those at the dollar store yes. I mean all of this is so doable other than you know maybe the alum powder on Amazon you can get all of these things locally the day of and you know it sure beats them eating actual dirt <laughs> yeah yeah My daughter still we've does. been there before too <laughs> yeah putting dirt is way healthier <laughs> yeah then you just have your little faux flower to stick in the top. Do you have any tips on how the best way to, to get the Oreos that, that consistency? Um, I mean, if you have little boys, give them a mallet and <laughs> yeah. put it in like, like a big ziplock bag. bag. And, and that'll yeah. occupy their time too. Wow, yes. they'll love that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> oh, All right, right, next. Okay, this is my favorite one. This is bubble art, and we had so much fun doing this, as you can see. You basically <laughs> are just going to take a plastic container. Um, you're going to put a squirt of Dawn dish soap or any dish soap you have. Gel food coloring. That's the most concentrated. works the best. And then about an inch of water. Mix yeah. it all up real good and then you're going to take your straw and you're going to blow in it until you get kind of a nice topping okay. of bubbles. Okay. Um, you want it kind of crusting over the container. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. You're good. And then you're just going to take your piece of cardstock and gently lay it down on top of the bubbles until they've popped. Okay. Like that? Okay. Yeah. And then lift it up and you'll see the bubble pops give you like a really pretty pattern with the color on your paper. And you can oh, let that, that dry. Oh. You can do it a million times <laughs> over on different colors and mix it up. And they turn out so cool. And then we kind of went the extra mile and said, let's practice our writing skills during spring breaks and that. grandma and grandpa letters. So mm -hmm. we turned them into note cards. And they got kind of fun and like cutting them out. But I mean, we had so much fun with this. We were working on it all day. So nice. And you can frame them too. I love how yeah. you did that. Yeah, great idea. I'm going to go here. Uh, but yes. you have more ideas because you have a book club. Tell me about this. Yes, mischiefmakerbooks.com. I mean, it's free. It comes out the first of the month, every month, and it comes with pranks, jokes, scavenger hunts, and lots of ideas like this. I love it. Oh, How's my going? gosh. <laughs> Okay. And you can mix and match colors, right? You can mix and, and match colors and the thumbtack. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so, I love that. Yes. I know. We almost keep, forgot to say that. Keep kids from accidentally drinking it. Right. So if you're working with little kids, you need to take a thumbtack and just do a tiny little hole anywhere on the straw, and it will create them not having, to, not being able to have a suction to suck it up versus blow it out. Great tip. Right. Yeah. Great ideas. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Thank you so much for more information on author Christy Cuthbert and the Mischief Maker Book Club. Just head to our website, salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab or just snap the QR code on your screen. All right. Well, every year, SeaWorld has something new, something fun that maybe they're debuting, and this year they do not disappoint. It's a new ride. It's the tallest and fastest of its kind. You got to write this. Yes. I still have, like, roller coaster <laughs> hair, don't care, going on. All right. I went out to check out the ride. It was both invigorating, frightening, and fun. Take a look. <laughs> Thank you.
remember riding swings as a kid, but you know what? Everything is bigger in Texas. And we are here at SeaWorld where their newest ride, Tidal Surge, is gonna take you 135 feet in the air and go as fast as Mike Osterhage drives on the freeway. Joining me right now is <laughs> Chuck Crow, because this thing goes how fast first? It goes 68 miles an hour. Mike, you need to slow your roll and be safe. Nah, he never <laughs> goes above 70. <laughs> but you, you know, you said it, this is not your average playground swing. This is the tallest, fastest ride of its kind, 100 feet high, 68 miles an hour. Those pendulum-like arms will swing up 135 feet with beautiful views of the SeaWorld Water Ski Lake and of the park. And as you get to the top of that 135 feet, there's this moment of weightlessness. Oh, you're no. Just kind of like levitating and floating. It doesn't last very long because then you come rushing down, crashing down 68 miles an hour. All right, Fiona, are you ready to ride the tide? As ready. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if I'll ever be ready, but yeah, let's do it. You're this. ready. Tidal surge. Here we go. All clear. Oh my gosh, I this is it. It's a moment of truth. Yes, you're right. It's a moment, yes, it's a moment of truth. You have hair, Fiona. <laughs> First world problems. I got roller coaster hair. How'd you like it? Uh, you know, it was absolutely frightening, <laughs> but fun. Yep. And thank goodness for my my seat partner there, little nine-year-old Samson. I, so far, I think he's like 20 times something like that, and, and that's that's the beauty right. of it here. You, you know, you get you come on out. You can ride this as much as you want. <laughs> Perfect yeah. for some spring break family yes. fun, right? Yeah. And there's even more stuff coming up. Yeah, you know, SeaWorld is known for, first and foremost, animals and conservation. Then we've got thrilling rides like Tidal Surge, but we also have events. After spring break, we're going to roll into one of my favorite Seven Seas Food Festival. You can just stroll around the park, tasting food from different places around the world, and also having some refreshing uh, beverages, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so if folks want to come out, of course, check out the rides here. How can they do that? Uh, you can just come on out to SeaWorld. <laughs> We open on the 5th, or you can go to SeaWorldSanAntonio.com, find out all about our annual passes, one-day tickets. Come on out, have some fun with us. Fiona, were you scared? I think that the screaming scary. <laughs> answers that for you. But if you take a look at Samson sitting next to me, notice, like, so cool, yeah. so calm the whole time. That. Nothing shakes right? Samson, so wow. thank goodness for my emotional support yeah. person <laughs> sitting next to me because I needed that. All right, so once again, Tidal Surge opens this Saturday. Aquatica opens too, and there's wow. a new ride there as well. It's called Riptide Race, where it starts atop a 51-foot tower. Folks get into a raft, and then Whoa. they race each other down to the Good bottom. Time. So lots of fun <laughs> to have there at SeaWorld. So I had on the show, a Broadway musical comes to San Antonio, except for this rendition, you're gonna feel like you're in the musical. We're getting a sneak peek at West Side Story Live. Plus, from food truck to Mexican restaurant, we're making chilaquiles with Naco 210. What makes these different? Next on SA Live.